And then we hit the mother load. I walked in and there was two huge boxes full of games. Hi everybody and welcome back to the Retro Ghetto. So it's been approximately a month since I did a video where I looked at how I afford the video game collection that you can see behind me and I detailed exactly how I find things in charity shops and how I then trade them to CEX and I took you guys along for the journey and I showed you some of the finds that I had along the way. As I say, it's been approximately a month, so I've amassed quite a few more finds. And I'm still hearing people on Facebook groups, YouTubers, saying there's no games in charity shops. It's not like it used to be, blah, blah, blah. Well, yet again, I'm here to prove all them people wrong, because I'm still finding good things in charity shops. There's going to be a few games along the way that you might be surprised to have some value, so hopefully you'll be able to learn a, a game or two that you definitely should not be overlooking in these shops or these situations should you come across them. And also, once I've got to the end and we've amassed the vouchers, I'm going to be going doing some hunting in CEX. I'm going to be buying some great things with these vouchers that we've amassed, and even maybe a grail along the way. So let's get straight into it, shall we? And the first find that I had was Mario and Sonic. These Olympics games do hold a bit of value on the Wii. They're definitely worth picking up. I think you can get about three quid for them. I must have found, no lie, ten of these games in the past year or so. So definitely worth picking up if you can pick them up for a pound or so. And one that you might be surprised to hear is the All-Star Racing on the PlayStation 3. This one does retain quite a bit of value. I think it sells for maybe somewhere in the region of £8. I'll put some um, CX information on the screen now just to be definitive on that. But yeah, between those two and Black Ops 3, I always find Call of Duty games, but Black Ops 3 on the PlayStation 4 is always worth picking up as well. I paid £4.50 total for those three games, and they amassed me a total of £16 in CEX vouchers. We're on the way. Retro ghetto. And before we get any further, guys, I just want to clarify the way in which I'm going to total the value. I'm going to do it using CEX vouchers, as always, for two reasons. One, it's nice and simple. It's a very easy way to see the value that we've amassed. And also because, as a collector, that's what I do. I take these games to CEX, I turn them into vouchers, and then I buy things from my collection that I want. Okay guys, so next up you can see that I found a couple of games. Now let me tell you something, Disney's Pixar's Cars, those games all hold value. I know from going for the full PAL Wii U set how much the value that the UK version of Cars 3 holds. And Cars 2 is also worth picking up if you can find it. That game currently gives £5 value. You'll also see that I picked up Need for Speed, I think it was Need for Speed Undercover. That was for the collection, so we're not going to be including that. But yeah, Cars 2 paid £1.50, and that was a £5 voucher total. Okay, so before we get back into games, I want to talk about DVDs. I used to overlook DVDs, guys. I'm not an expert when it comes to that. I used to just sort of cast my eye over the Blu-ray, see if there's anything I wanted for my collection, or see if there was anything that was obviously of value. However, I've been missing out. And the one thing that you really want to keep an eye on is box sets. There's quite a lot of value still in quite a few box sets, even though they're DVD and not Blu-ray. A couple that I found recently was Dexter. I got seasons one to five. I paid £1.95 for that, and that was £7 value. And then I hit a bit of a jackpot. I actually used to watch this show. I used to really enjoy it back in the day. And that is Wheeler Dealers. I found the complete box set of Wheeler Dealers with all the seasons on. Again, I weighed £1.95 for it. Guys, that was a £22 trading value. I mean, who'd have thought, right? For an old DVD of Wheeler Dealers, £22 trading value. Make sure you're keeping your eyes open for DVD box sets in particular. So those two purchases, they set me back a total of just shy of £4. And I made £29 trading value on them. It's job! I love my job! I love it! Okay, and back to the game finds. This particular charity shop charged just 50 pence per game. Sometimes you go to shops and it's so random. They charge you one pound one day, two pound another day. On this day, they were 50p each. I picked up Just Cause 2, Grand Theft Auto 5. is always worth picking up the Grand Theft Auto games, guys. And Phantom Pain, always worth picking that one up as well. Again, I must have found 10 plus copies of that in the past 12 months or so. They're everywhere. There's still a bit of value if you can get them for in and around a pound or two. I paid a total of £1.50 for those three games, £4.60 trading value, it all helps. Retro and then this next find was really lucrative, this is something again that you should not be sleeping on, 
controllers. The price of video game controllers seems to go on through the roof. I remember when you could pick up controllers for a few quid, nobody wanted them, you're tripping over them. Now PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3 controllers, the price just keeps going up. I found two official DualStock 6 axis controllers, <laughs> easy for me to say, um, and I think they give £14 each. I think I paid £2.95 each for those controllers, and there's £14 each in value, so for what? Just shy of £6 investment, I made £28 trading. And this clip you're seeing now is a good example of games that you think are going to be worth something, but they're actually not, and there's not enough meat on the bone to buy them if you're going to trade them in CX. If you need them for your own collection, great, but this particular store, I picked up nothing. Okay, so moving on to this charity shop, somebody had taken in their DS collection. I picked up the Mario Brothers game, I paid £5 for it, I doubled my money because that was a straight £10 trade, I doubled my money all day long if I can. You also notice in the background there there was a Tetris, they wanted £4 for that. Not enough meat on the bone to take it to CEX, wasn't worth it unless you wanted it for your collection. The reason I wanted to highlight this video in particular is that there was also a, I think it was one of the pink DS lights, and they were selling it in box for £30. I believe I checked CX app and they were trading with something like £50. I'd always think twice about things like that, guys. Firstly, you're not even making 50%. Whilst you are making £20 voucher profit, you've still got to outlay £30 cash. The reason I do this is to save my cash. But not only that, when you're talking consoles and controllers and things like that, it's always a risk. CEX can be very fussy. I bought no end of things that I walked in and they said, oh, I'm not taking that. The serial number slightly scratched or when we did the test, there's a slight drift or any little thing can happen. So it's not always worth the hassle when you're talking about controllers and consoles when you take them straight to CEX. Make sure you're doing your due diligence and paying your homework before you take them in. On this occasion, I decided to pass at £30 to make £20 extra voucher. Let me know in the comments if you would have picked it up. Retro Ghetto. And then I found a couple more DS games, Sonic titles. Sonic titles seem to always hold their value on every system. Um, I think I paid £3 total for those two games and they gave me, I think, £11. I think it was £5 and £6 respectively for the two. You'll also notice in that footage there was a Tom Clancy game. I picked it up simply because it's sealed. I've just gone straight into my collection. And then we hit the mother load. I walked in and there was two huge boxes full of games. They were all PlayStation 3 games except for, I think, the one Xbox One game that I picked up. I think I took a total of about 18 of these once I'd been through and seen which ones had the value. I paid a total of £20 for those games and the Turtle Beach headset. And CEX returned £40 trading voucher on the games and £8 I believe for the headset. So yeah, not a bad turnaround at all. I think the best games out of the bunch that I picked up were, again, Phantom Pain as we've already spoke about. Always worth picking that one up. The Wolverine, the X-Men Origins game, I think that was like £6 trading value and also destroy all humans which is about five pound trading but yeah a good find all in all and then i thought i'd hit another jackpot but i walked in and i saw this xbox one i'm still in that mindset of thinking xbox one and playstation 4 games are new i go to charity shops i see that blue or green case i get all excited but there's not much value in xbox one games and this proves it out of this bundle all i bought was one game and that was grand theft auto 5 you might notice that there was two GTA 5s in there, but one of them sadly didn't have the disc. So I picked up one GTA 5, I paid £1.50 and it returned a tenner, so it was a good investment. But yeah, don't get too excited about Xbox One. I think because of Game Pass and things like that, there's not much trading value at CX when it comes to Xbox One anymore. Probably a good time to collect for the system, but not a good time to get a return on your investment. Retro Ghetto. Okay, and then something happened to me that I don't remember happening to me for a long, long time. I found Mega Drive games in a charity shop. I walked in, it was almost like... Is anyone else seeing this, right? Grab them as quickly as I could. There was two games. I picked up one of them for the collection, and that was Lemmings. Uh, this cost me £5. It's in decent condition. Didn't have it in the collection. I think CX sold this for about £12, so I was prepared to pay the £5 they wanted for it. I did actually leave behind Mega Games 2, which I was thinking to myself, imagine if you didn't own that game. What an amazing game to find in the charity shop. Three of the best games on the system, right? But there wasn't enough meat on the bone. CX don't actually take Mega Games for some reason. It's very strange what they do with compilations. And sometimes it's very odd what games they do and don't take. But yeah, it wasn't worth picking up to sell it on eBay. There was not enough meat on the bone. I think it was about £5. There was no manual in there. Um, but yeah, I was very happy to have found any Mega Drive game in a charity shop. So yeah, Lemmings is going into my collection. Okay, and then the same charity shop on another day, I found Mario Kart on the DS. I decided to keep it. It wasn't cheap. It was like £7, but again, considerably cheaper than what CX charge you for it. So that's going straight into the collection. And then also find a copy of Minecraft. As I've said before, if you ever find any Minecraft, you pick it up because there's value in them all. They wanted £5, which was a little bit high. But when I actually got to the counter, there was quite a big scratch on it. 
Uh, the woman noticed it before I did, she said are you okay with it, I said I don't know to be honest and she said I'll knock a couple of quid off, she gave it me for £3 in the end. I took it to a local CEX, they're brilliant in there, I mention them all the time. Uh, they resurfaced it for me free of charge and then they accepted it. So I think it cost me like £3 and I think the trading was like £8, so yeah, like £5 gain in terms of trade value. But um, yeah, a bit of a cautionary tale, always, always check the discs before buying games in a charity shop. Right, so if my calculations are correct, I spent just under 50 quid and I made just under 170, about 168 pound I believe. I will take that all day long. As I said in the last video guys, when we looked at charity shop hunting, I'm out every single day. I love it. So what some people in the comments did say to me, oh, you've got to factor in time, you've got to factor in your fuel. Of course you have, but I enjoy it. And so does my son. So whenever we've got a day spare and it's daddy day, not only do we go to the park and things like that, but we also go to all the charity shops or secret shops as he calls them. He calls them secret shops because when he was younger, I told him, um, don't tell your mum, it's a secret. And he came back and said, mummy, we've been to a secret shop. And it's kind of stuck ever since then. But it's just something that we love doing, um, you know, as a father and son duo. It's uh, something that we do to bond. He always ends up with a few toys. I end up with a few games and a few CX badges. So it's just win, win, win. I love doing it and so does he. But yeah, to have nearly £170 a mask for these visits in, like I say, it's only been about a month. So I'm very, very happy with that. What I'm going to do now is show you guys what I picked up with some of those vouchers. I went on a trip to CEX that had some amazing things come in and I was very happy with what I found. So the first thing that I picked up was the Punisher on the PlayStation 2. I've heard a lot of good things about this. Apparently it's a very brutal game. I think there's quite a lot of um, animated scenes and cut scenes of quite brutal finishes and I think it's quite gory but even the woman as I checked out said to me how much she loved this game. So yeah, I've heard a lot of positive things about it and I'm looking forward to getting involved with the Punisher. Again, let me know in the comments if you've played this game and if you recommend it. And then as always, the Burton on Trent CEX store was full of great stuff. I think they'd recently had a trading of loads of collector's editions as you've probably seen on screen now. I was tempted to buy multiple of them, but there was one that really caught my eye. It's a bit of a grail of mine. Whilst I'm not a huge fan of the franchise of the games, I did enjoy this one. And such is my love for my Greek mythology, I've always wanted this collector's edition. And when I found it at the right price in great condition, I knew I had to have it. And that is, hold on, it is one I prepared earlier. <laughs> the Assassin's Creed Odyssey Medusa edition. Uh, it does come with a sleeve. The sleeve's got a little bit tatty on the top, but I'm not bothered about that at all. Uh, this comes in a beautiful box. And uh, what I'm probably going to do is show V-Roll as opposed to me doing it live on screen because I haven't properly unboxed this yet. But as I said guys, I am a huge Greek mythology fan as my tattoos all over my body will attest. Also my love for Hercules and everything else. Right from my childhood I was a huge fan of films like Clash of the Titans and that love of Greek mythology has just stayed with me and I'm sort of passing it down now to little man Retro Ghetto Jr. Even when it thunders outside he says it's Zeus and I don't think I've ever been prouder as a father when he says things to me like that. But yeah, the Collector's Edition statue is unreal. Um, it sits on like this Medusa base, you'll be seeing it on screen now but yeah it was just something that I fell in love with. It was an impulse purchase but as I say I don't regret it one bit because I absolutely love Greek mythology. This was my favourite Assassin's Creed game. I put a lot of hours into it. It does get a bit fetch quest heavy. It's definitely a game that I would like to invest some more time in in the future. But yeah, I was very, very happy to have picked this up. So yeah, I paid a total of £70 for the Punisher game and for the collector's edition of the Assassin's Creed Odyssey game. Which still leaves us with a surplus of £100 vouchers. And all that just from visiting a few charity shops. I just like to make these videos just to let people know that you can still do it. There is still games in charity shops. I feel the need to keep proving it because I keep seeing the naysayers saying it's not possible. It is. You've just got to be prepared to go. What you don't see is the tens and tens of shops I go to and leave empty handed. But if you enjoy it and you're going out and you're having fun at the same time, there's nothing to lose, right? I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I'll see you on the next one. Play your games, keep it retro. Take care. Retro ghetto. <laughs>